So I've spent the past two years working as a marketing manager for a destination marketing organization. And during that time, I've got a lot of helpful tips and advice that I can offer to you if you're wanting to break into the travel influencer scene. Now, it doesn't matter if you want to be a travel vlogger, a travel writer, or if you're a photographer or whatever else that you might classify yourself as. These tips are going to help you to break into that industry or see an increase of leads, which is ultimately going to see an increase of revenue. So let's get into it. So tip number one that I can tell you is to be sure that you have a strong portfolio or some type of representation of your work. This could be things like press kits, social media websites, your own personal website. Just be sure that you have somewhere that someone like myself can go and view the types of work that you can already create. So that way we can get an idea of what you can create for us. Do you make videos? Be sure you have a YouTube channel or somewhere that we can go watch a series of videos to make sure it aligns with, with the marketing campaign or project that we're working on. If you're a writer, let's see those writing skills. What kind of audience do you have? Who do you target? What types of writing do you do? Are they listicles? Are they informative blogs? Are they photo series? Are you a photographer? What is the style of your photography? Are you good at events? Are you good at shooting people, locations, lifestyle? Those are all important things that you need to have showcased in order for someone like myself or someone else to hire you for a gig. So tip number two is your following. So think about this in two different ways. If you don't have a very big following, let's say you're a YouTube travel vlogger with maybe 100 subscribers, you only get about 10 or 15 views per video, rarely ever get comments and traffic just isn't being driven anywhere, maybe you could market yourself as a way to create a video for us to put on our own outlets, maybe our Facebook pages, our Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. You, you see kind of where I'm going there. If you have the quality, but not the following, then maybe try to offer to create that piece of work, whether it's writing, photography, blogging, uh, video or whatever for the marketing agency. However, if you do have a following, and I would say somewhere around maybe a thousand plus people, and they are pretty engaging, then yes, I think you could reach out to an agency uh, and, and offer your services for the content to be put on your own platforms to reach out to your audience. Number three is to have a unique skill set. You want to be sure that you stand out from the rest of the crowd and don't try to strive to be like any and everyone else. And this is one of the reasons so many people preach this but don't necessarily talk about it is because, you know, being unique and being yourself isn't always just about personal satisfaction satisfaction, but it's about being different enough that maybe you could land a gig versus somebody else. Because let's say I have two photographers come up to me and both of them shoot the same style of photography. Let's say it's lifestyle, but one photographer is exceptionally better than the other. Then obviously I'm going to hire the one that produces better work. But if you come to me with an offer that is unique and different and set yourself apart from the commonalities that I see day in and day out, you might get hired over that person, even if your skill set's not as strong, just because you've brought something new to the table. And this goes across all forms of media. That's why it's crucial to have a unique skill set that is different from everyone else. And that idea of a unique skill set leads into this next topic, which is to have a very outgoing and relatable personality. Typically, the way that things work in this industry is that you network, you build relationships with people. So yes, your portfolio is very strong and it's a very important thing, but I've learned that relationship building is one of the best of all. And the more you can be relatable to somebody else, the more you can be outgoing and accepting to different types of things and ideas, the more likely you are to land gigs. And also, if your face and your brand is going to be representing our brand, we want to make sure that it is relatable to our target audience as other marketers want as well. And we also want to make sure that you have that outgoing, nice personality. So for example, if you're someone that talks about things that might be destructive to our brand or uses a lot of foul language or things that you know aren't going to be receptive very well, that's a, pretty much a red flag for us and we'll have to pass to the next person. Even if your content is great and your audience is huge, if it's going to hurt our brand, we can't go with that. So having that 
that nice, polite, relatable personality that's full of energy and fun to showcase our place. That's what we're looking for. And talking about that, that actually brings me into the last point, which is we want you to be able to tell the story of the destination that we're marketing. And so you can really capture that essence of that location, because we want you to be able to showcase that location as someone who maybe is visiting for the first time so that we can show other people that might be visiting for the first time what to expect when they get there, to get them excited, because the whole basis of the tourism industry is to get people to come to the targeted uh, destinations. That's the whole point of my job in marketing is to get people excited about locations by telling their stories and capturing that essence and making it somewhere that sounds like it's really fun to go to, showcasing all the things that are available for them to do and giving them them options and those ideas and itineraries. So if you can do that, if you can capture the essence of a location and really sell its story, that's exactly what we're looking for as well. So those are just a few of the back end insights of things that I look for when I'm choosing whether or not to hire somebody to help me in assistance with a marketing campaign. There's a lot more that goes into this stuff and I am more than willing to talk more about it as we go along. Things like how to contact somebody, what to say to them when you get in touch with them. Should you email? Should you call? Should you show up? Probably, probably not that one. But who do you call? How do you find these people? These are all questions that I want to answer in future videos over the coming weeks. But if you do have any questions, let me hear those in the comments section below. Comment your successes and failures. Ask me any questions you have about the industry that maybe I didn't answer today. And I'd be happy to discuss those with you. And who knows, maybe a great video idea comes out of it and I can go more in detail on those topics in some future episodes. But thanks so much for tuning in today. If you did like this video and it was helpful to you at all, please feel free to support me by leaving a thumbs up on the video. It really does actually help. And above all, most importantly, be sure to create something new today.